Hi, welcome to the small shed. This Saturday I'm back down in Weston and I'm putting the front wall into a tractor shed and that's coming up next. <laughs> Now before I get on to the tractor shed there's uh, one little purchase to look at that I uh, made last week. One of the advantages of going to the model railway shows is that occasionally there'll be stuff there that's not model railway related. Uh, <coughs> and um, last weekend I was at a show down in Kettering and they have a bring and buy down there and there was a large drill press um, on the counter and I sort of looked at it uh, on the way past and then I went back and had another look and in the end I decided that uh, for the price it was it was worth uh, worth taking a punt on it. Uh, I've already got a drill press but it's pretty old it's a bit rusty here and there and it's a little bit poorly it's seen better days so it may well be that this one will replace it. Let me just show you uh, when I get a chance to compare the two I will. It's um, it's a, a Wix cheap Chinese job. They are still available. <coughs> it's hardly been used. There's a little bit of um, metal filings down there so it has had some use. It comes with a nice um, machine guard which my old one was uh, failing on. Chuck key, it works, it's very smooth, it's very quiet. They're only about £70 new so it's not any uh, massive budget uh, saving exercise but I got it for the princely sum of £25 so that will replace the other um, drill press I think on the cart that I've just been building. Uh, and we'll take uh, pride of place in the shop as the the new drilling machine. Quite what I do with the old one, I'm not sure. I may use the motor off the old one um, for something like um, a large belt, a large disc sander that I've been looking at doing. Um, so that may well come back and be used in part in the future. So that's the uh, the purchase for the moment and. Uh, it fits well in the shop. Now with regards to the tractor shed it's not quite what it seems. My grandson had for Christmas um, some plywood or MDF buildings for a farm building set he had and he also had a large tractor and trailer and a few other bits and pieces and I noticed when we were down there a couple of weeks ago he was playing with these things but he couldn't get the tractor inside the shed so he used his resources and just not put the front wall in at all and I thought it might be nice to make a new front wall for him with a sufficiently large size opening in it. So I surreptitiously measured it up and traced around it when he wasn't around the other day um, and I'm going to make a, an attempt to make a, a replacement front wall I'll then go back down and we'll test fit it so it won't be finished this week and I can test fit it against um, his existing pieces and if it fits I can come back and paint it and if not I can then just make necessary alterations and then get it painted. So this is how I'm going to be doing that build. used as a template it was basically a piece of cardboard that uh, I'd traced round while I was down there so that although it gave me a pretty good idea it was never going to be um, spot on accurate uh, but I didn't really want to make it obvious as to what I was doing so I took a piece of 6mm uh, MDF that was lying around at the back of the uh, workbenches uh, left over from one of the projects I'm not quite sure what and basically just transferred all of the measurements 
from the cardboard box template I'd done onto the MDF uh, just to get a rough idea of how it would work it's a fairly simple job just to move the, uh, the dimensions across and all I was doing that was any different was to cut a, a larger and taller opening I think the original farm set he had uh, intended to have a floor uh, halfway up the building like a mezzanine of some sort and that way uh, th there was a, effectively two openings in the front wall rather than just the one and uh, one of the advantages I've got now is having all the, uh, the goodies to make these jobs easier so for the arch at the top of the doorway uh, rather than just freehand it I've got the Banggood jig for the katsu so I might as well use it um, it's very easy to use the biggest problem I've well not problem the biggest time waster I as far as I'm concerned is that every time I want to use it um, you've got to take the bottom plate off the katsu and, and for that reason alone it's almost worth spending the 30 quid I think it is for a new one on a, a, a dedicated router to have in that circle cutting jig because I got it on a whim but actually I think this is probably about the third time I've used it in a couple of months so it is um, quite a versatile bit of kit and it's well worth to say probably investing in another router just to specifically sit with that uh, I put a little there's a six mil or quarter inch I'm not quite sure which stud that you get in the kit that you can center the router in with that white plastic insert and then you put the bit in in the knowledge that the uh, the router bit is dead center in the hole again it doesn't really matter in that you're measuring the distance between the edge of the router and the pin that the thing registers in but uh, it does keep it nicely sorted and then I just dropped it in and uh, done the routering one of the things I've done in the past that I didn't do this time until it was almost too late um, is to actually mark it's quite difficult to see uh, particularly with the dust extraction on uh, where the start and the finish of the cut is on something like this it isn't like a circle that you just keep going round and round and what I've done in the past is to just mark um, on the you put it at the start of the cut and then you draw some lines which I'm just doing now um, that mark where the tail of the jig is and it gives you a, a reference point when you're actually cutting then I took it over to the bandsaw and again it's a fairly textbook sort of style of bandsaw cutting uh, there's the little lugs that protrude from the side of the wall that have got the slots in for the other panels to sit in and really it's just a little bit of a faff to get those cut out but they're fairly easy to do it just meant you couldn't get a decent run of cut on anything because uh, there are all these pieces in the way. The other thing is I could do with a bigger bandsaw because the throat of the bandsaw isn't big enough to do some of the cuts. I had to turn the piece over and mark out the measurements on the other side as well because you can't always get in but I suppose it doesn't really matter whatever size saw you've got you'll always want something bigger I suppose then it was just cleaned up with the sander ready to take down for a trial fit Well, when he'd gone to bed, uh, next time we were down there, I had a quick look 
and it, there are a couple of problems which I need to resolve so it's just as well I haven't uh, got him excited at the prospect of a new piece. Um, the material I've got, the MDF, is 6mm. The material they've used is about 5 and there's a little bit of a problem it won't quite slot together. And that's fairly simple to sort. I can just thin this MDF down a bit where the fixing lugs are. So I'm going to do that and more importantly the actual tractor itself was about half an inch wider than the openings I'd estimated. Um, so I just need to trim those openings out a bit. So we'll bring it back, do that, give it a coat of paint and I'll show you on the next video um, when we're down there the end result of that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please press like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye!